Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the sternocleidomastoid muscle, its origin, insertion, relation as well as uh, the applied anatomy of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So let's begin the topic. The sternocleidomastoid muscle which divides the anterior as well as the posterior triangle. Its origin from where? So here it is the clavicle and manubrium sterni. On to the manubrium sterni, which part of the manubrium sterni gives origin to the sternocleidomastoid muscle? So, into the manubrium sterni, you can easily divide it. It is the superior, this is the inferior part and on to the superior, you can say lateral as well as the medial. So, it is originating from the superior lateral side of the manubrium sterni. Then on to the clavicle. Into the clavicle, we can easily divide the clavicle into three parts, medial one third, middle one third and the lateral. But the sternocleidomastoid originates from where? It originates from the medial one third of the clavicle superior surface. So from the superior surface, superior lateral aspect of the manubrium sterni, it goes above backward as well as going towards which part? So onto the insertion, uh, what we need to remember? So onto the occipital bone, onto the external side, this is the external orbital protuberance and the superior nuchal line as well as the inferior nuchal line. Under the superior nuchal line, it has the medial part as well as the lateral. So it originates from the lateral half of the superior nuchal line. Then onto the mastoid process, which is the part of the temporal bone. It originates from the which part of the mastoid process? Then the answer is lateral surface of the mastoid process. Medial as well as the lateral aspect of mastoid, but it originates from the lateral surface of the mastoid process. So that's how the sonogram mastoid is inserted. Now what is the blood supply of the sternocleidomastoid muscle? So mainly it is supplied by the two artery, the occipital artery as well as the superior thyroid artery. Both are the branches of the external carotid artery. And the external carotid artery is the branch of the common carotid. The nerve supply is supplied by the 11th cranial nerve which is known as the spinal accessory nerve. Now let's discuss the movements of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So when the, both the sternocleidomastoid muscle contract, it brought the head forward. It brings the head forward. Yes, both the sides of the muscle muscle when contract. When one side of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, muscle contracts, then it brings the head towards the chest. You can say towards the shoulder and it directs the chin onto the opposite side. Now, the third moment, it is also helpful into the lateral rotation of the head. And the fourth moment, when it uh, is uh, contracting towards the head, it is also helpful into the forceful inspiration. So it is elevates the ribs as well as the clavicular part and helpful into the forceful uh, inspiration. Now let's discuss the relations of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So first we will discuss the superficial relationship of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So here is the skin, then the superficial fascia and as well as the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia comes onto the superficially. Then what are the muscles which are related to the sternocleidomastoid muscle which are uh, deep relations, posterior belly of diagastric, then you can say here uh, splenius capitus, then the scalenus uh, anterior, scalenus uh, medius, here it is related as well as scalene as a posterior in deep relationship of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Yeah, I just forget the year there is a sternohyoid, sternothyroid, which are from the here sternal that are going towards the hyoid as well as the thyroid cartilage. Now what are the arteries relationship with the sternocleidomastoid muscle? Then the common carotid artery and its branch internal carotid as well as the external carotid. And here onto the lower part it is related with to the transverse cervical artery as well as the suprascapular artery which are the branches of the thyrocervical trunk. And the thyrocervical trunk is the branch from the which artery? Then it is a branch from the subclavian artery. So here you can easily say that uh, the scalenus anterior muscle related to that. Now the veins which are related to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the deep relationship is internal jugular as well as the superficial relationship external jugular vein. Always remember internal is deep and the external is superficially. Now the nerves which are related to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So uh, vagus nerve which is the most important 10th cranial nerve and as well as here onto the brachial plexus part you can easily say there is a upper trunk middle trunk and the lower trunk it is located here and they are in deep relationship with the sternocleidomastoid muscles as well as the important one which supplies the branch to the uh, sternohyoid sternothyroid that is a, a round loop which is known as the ansa cervicalis 
So this ansa cervicalis also lies in relationship with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So I hope you all have understand the different relations. Now the applied anatomy here you can see the head is bent over the one side and chin is tilted towards another side. This condition is known as the torticollis or a wry neck. It occurs because of the spasm of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It can be because of damage to the spinal accessory nerve also. Here you can see here that there is a tumor onto the sternocleidomastoid region which occurs because of the birth trauma. And the trauma leads to the edema as well as the necrosis. So thanks for watching. 